Good day everybody. In today's class, I will be introducing you to numerical integration. Now, this is very, very important, numerical integration. Specifically, if you are interested in obtaining the probability density function. And that being said, if you were to be encountering a situation where uh, distribution of a continuous random variable is given, and you are expected to find the density of the random variable, the numerical integration will be of utmost use to you. So having mentioned that, let me introduce to you this powerful formula. This is called as the gauss legendre two-point formula or it is also known to be as the gauss quadrature two-point formula. Now the formula is written as follows. Now suppose you have an integral i is equal to integral a to b f of x times a dx then we have this integral to be rewritten as i is equal to b negative a divided by 2 multiplied with w1 times f of sum x1 positive w2 times f of sum x2. This is called as the Gauss quadrature two-point formula where w1 is equal to w2 is equal to 1 and the value of our x1 is given to be as b negative a divided by 2 times z1 plus b positive a divided by 2 and the value of x2 is given as b negative a divided by 2 multiplied with z2 plus b positive a divided by 2. So these are the values of x1 and x2. Now the value of z1 which you see here is taken to be as a negative 1 over root 3 and z2 is equal to positive 1 over root 3. So this is the standard formula and the values are stated here. Now I'm going to demonstrate how exactly we can utilize this formula to solve this question. Integral say negative 2 to 2 e raised to the power of negative x squared over 2 times dx. Now if you remember the Gaussian integral, I have given clear notes on this. Integral negative infinity to positive infinity e raised to the power of negative x squared times dx. I have shown this to be equal to root of pi. But the main issue with this question is that the limits are actually negative 2 to positive 2. So that is a huge challenge. And given that requirement, we will have to solve this question. So I'm going to show you how to solve this question using the Gauss quadrature two-point formula. So foremost, what I will have to do is, after stating the formula, you will have to go and find out the value of i. Now, in this case, the i starts with b negative a divided by 2. So let me take b negative a. So I will just say consider b negative a divided by 2. So if you were to calculate b negative a divided by 2, you will get the value of 2. And having obtained the first component, clearly we know that w1 is equal to w2 is equal to 1. So there is no point in handling that. Now we need to extract the value of x1. Now x1 is equal to b negative a divided by 2 multiplied with z1 positive b positive a divided by 2 and my z1 is equal to negative 1 over root 3. So take this and substitute it here. b negative a divided by 2 is 2. That is multiplied with negative 1 over root 3. And b positive a. My b is 2. My a is negative 2. Right? So this one cancels off. So I get negative 2 over root 3. So this is for the first component of x1. Now x2 is equal to b negative a divided by 2 multiplied with z2 positive b positive a divided by 2. Now this is going to get vanished because we have seen the value vanishing. Now b negative a over 2 is this 2. Now this is multiplied with my z2 is 1 over root 3. 1 over root 3. So this is equal to 2 over root 3 right now take all of this let me go to a new sheet take all of this and uh, substitute it in the function 
So what is the value of i? Therefore, we know that i will be equal to b negative a over 2. That's going to be 2. My w1 is 1. f of x1. x1 is going to be negative 2 over root 3 positive 1 multiplied with x2. x2 is 2 over root 3. So 2 over root 3. Right? Now f of x is equal to e raised to the power of negative x squared divided by 2. So f of x1 is equal to e raised to the power of negative x1 squared divided by 2. Now x1 is equal to negative 2 over root 3. So you come over here. You find out. First we find x1 squared. Right? So this is equal to negative 2 over root 3 squared which is equal to 4 over 3 which is approximately 1.33. So now we need to find e raised to the power of negative x1 squared divided by 2. So that is equal to e raised to the power of negative 1.33 divided by 2 which is equal to e raised to the power of negative. Now what you can do is take 1.33 you divide by 2 you get a value of 0 0.665 now you press shift and you set in motion the exponential value so it's going to be negative 0 0.6665 now this is approximately equal to 0 0.5143 now this is my f of x x1 now i need to find f of x2 now f of x2 is e raised to the power of negative x2 squared divided by 2 right so calculate x2 squared now this is equal to 2 over root 3 squared which is equal to 4 over 3 which is approximately 1.33 so therefore f of x2 is equal to e raised to the power of negative 1.33 divided by 2 which is eventually going to be producing the same value right this is the value that we will be getting in uh, in this case also this is x1 so this is approximately 0 0.5143 so there is no difference in the values evaluated so we have got this now go back to the formula so what is the formula so therefore i is equal to 2 times of f of negative 2 over root 3 positive f of 2 over root 3 right so this is going to give me 2 of now you got 0 0.5143 plus 0 0.5143 so this is going to be giving me and this is the value we are getting so let me write that down 2.0572 so this is the solution units for integrating negative 2 to positive 2 e raised to the power of negative x squared over 2 times dx okay so this is the solution now having given you this technique the gauss quadrature technique i would like to give you an element of caution here now this technique is very effective for polynomial functions but given the fact that the function we are dealing is an exponential function the Gauss quadrature method will merely give you an approximation. See, in this case, the approximation is 2.0572. We cannot claim that this approximation is error free. So, given that point, I would like to do the next video lesson where I will show you another method, a better method than this two point method. So, with that in mind, let me move on to the next video lesson. Thank you, everybody. Please like, share, and subscribe.